Welcome to Lighten Up TV, enlightening, inspiring, and empowering humanity. This is a journey of self-discovery. On this journey, we are in search of answers to the burning questions that have intrigued mankind for millennia. Who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here? And where are we going? By merging scientific discoveries with spiritual revelations, we will explore the possibility that mind and matter are one and the same in a vibrant feel of pure consciousness. What if this eternally expanding field of consciousness is of and from the same source? These revelations that we may actually share one mind in a unified field that expands into the cosmos has the potential to cause a powerful shift in the collective consciousness. On our fascinating journey, we will explore ancient legends, modern discoveries, and emerging truths about the spiraling creative forces that spun this creation into being. From spirituality to religion, super string theory to the Big Bang, from gods and goddesses to angels and aliens, we will dive into the mysteries of creation. Are you ready to lighten up? Starring your host, Suzanne Ross, television personality and producer, inspirational author and speaker. She is a 5D truth seeker and spiritual pioneer on the front lines raising the frequency of humanity. Through her shows, books and events, she has dedicated her life to activating the matrix for global ascension. Introducing Frequency Attunement Artist, Celestial Channel, and Star Seed Ambassador, Light Star. Hello and welcome to Lighten Up TV. I am your host, Suzanne Ross. And I'm so delighted to be here today with Light Star. Welcome, Light Star. Thank you. So glad to be here. Yes. Lightstar lives in Sedona, Arizona, and she has been tuning into the stars for many years now. She is a celestial channel, a star seed ambassador, and an attunement artist. And I first became familiar with you because I saw your incredibly beautiful artwork in some of the galleries here. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. I love, love, love doing the artwork, and it's been my pleasure to, you know, allow that to come forth, and from the realms, and from all the different angelic and galactic and elemental realms. Yes, it is so inspiring. It's just incredibly beautiful, and you can find her artwork online and purchase it there as well. Um, we're going to get started with your personal story and how you sort of got on this incredible path of becoming a celestial channel and starseed ambassador. You know, this is an interesting one because some people have had these experiences where they started out really young as uh, having these gifts and they just naturally had them. And that, although that was true in my case, I didn't know about it. So those of you that understand the energy of an intuitive empath, which is the term that we use for people that are extremely sensitive and have these extreme sensitivities, especially as a child, but not knowing any of it, not having family members that can teach you about this or understand what you're feeling, what you're sensing. And so it wasn't until many, many years, until my later years, where a lot of this started to unfold and that I start to utilize these gifts into uh, doing session work and utilizing that because I was in the corporate world for many, many years. So it was a bit hidden to me until I was ready to have that awakening or that unfoldment. And then when I did, which generally happened when I moved here to Sedona, 
because mm -hmm. not those surprising of, those of you that live in Sedona <laughs> we all know how this happens it's just you come here and explosion happens of your gifts and you just begin to open up like nothing else and so generally speaking in that time frame about 2009 ish 2009 10 is when I started to really have my awakening I was in Colorado at the time mm. and I was working there in a uh, an uh, environmental uh, restoration company, construction oriented, you know, very, very different industry. Um, and I was doing some marketing uh, type of work. And I really started, to, it started to wind down and I had some experiences where I knew like intuitively that things needed to change. I needed to change. And I needed to shift into doing some of this work of, in the intuitive field. And so it was sort of a awakening, as you will. Sometimes we all have those just awakenings or those knowings that, and then when the market crashed and I lost my job as well as other people did at that time period, it hurled me into <laughs> having to figure this out. And really that's the, the beginning of the journey of how I started to unfold all of this. And it's been a process, you know, for sure. <laughs> Yes, and that so often happens where you're trying to stay in a job that aligns with societal standards, but it's like you have this nudging, yeah. and it gets more and more intense until finally you surrender to it, and it really realigns you with your true calling, and then you can step on your path, and that's oftentimes what an awakening looks like. And, and it doesn't look pretty all the time, right? <laughs> well, because your life crumbles and falls apart is. as is and has to be rebuilt yeah. into this new definition of who you now are. <sighs> so you're really going through a process of having to let go of all that you thought you knew about yourself. And that is what we are all having to go through and all called as you step up into this energy and frequency of who you really are. It means you have to look at what you thought you were. <laughs> And then sometimes that has to kind of crumble and go away before you begin to understand what you're truly here for and what your true mission is, your life purpose or your destiny path, whatever, you know, some people use those different terms to really figure out why you came here. And we start to realize most of us weren't just, you know, plop, we're, you know, some of us were dropped off here. Yes, that is true. <laughs> but in that case, but generally speaking, we came here for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. And all of us have a very a different and unique way of expressing what we are here for. And so it's very important for all of us to not look outside of ourselves to everybody else and try to fit yourself into a, a little puzzle piece of what you think you're supposed to be according to what other people are doing. And that's one of the hardest things is to really turn inward and really start to understand what your individual mission is, how it's supposed to be expressed in your unique way and not like the next person. Because if you're starborn, you guys are, you know, you're really coming here for uh, unique purposes and it's not going to look like the standard everyday 3D type stuff. So you're going to be asked to uh, show your light, shine your light in your unique way. And you have to be ready for that. And it takes courage. Right? Sure this does. is like courage yes. to step up into the the limelight for those of you that are going to be in the limelight and haven't been wanting to be in the limelight and shining around, you know, peeking around the curtain. You're now going to be like, okay, let's step out in front. And that may not feel comfortable. So there's a sense of uh, comfortability that comes into being uncomfortable and being okay with being uncomfortable because. You know, everyone's going to have to grow and stretch. And to grow and stretch, you go through that uncomfortability zone. And that's where some people decide, I don't want to do this. It's too scary. I'm done. You know, or I'm just going to go back and hide into the corner here. But your, your soul will continue to prompt you and to nudge you in different ways. So say, okay, maybe you're not ready now. But it's not like it will ever go away. You will constantly have situations, <laughs> circumstances, synchronicities that will continue to be, let's give you another opportunity. Are you ready yet? And sometimes your life crumbles so much that you're like, okay, <laughs> I surrender. Surrender, right? Yes. It's all about surrendering. So it's not an easy path, but it is the, the path of basically that will 
honor your soul and that will make you the most happiest and the most fulfilled if you do step forward. So yeah, I love how you emphasize expressing your really unique personality, your own unique ascension, your own unique awakening, and how you will uniquely express yourself at this time, fulfilling your mission. Because just like you said, um, not determining who you should be or the path you should take based on societal standards, mm -hmm. but also when you do awaken and you move into this group of people who feel called and have different you know, missions on this planet at this time, that you also don't reflect off of them either yeah. and try to do what they're doing. Or even getting to know yourself by reflecting on someone else who's then telling you who you are mm -hmm. and what you should be doing. Yep. You know, it's so important to spend time getting to know yourself, mm -hmm. spend time exploring your own unique mission and what exactly that looks like and oftentimes coming to a mm -hmm. star seed ambassador like yourself um, can be very helpful in, you know, guiding people yeah, to absolutely. know themselves and to be aligned with their true mission and their purpose. Right. And, and it's also about to some people are like, I don't even know what I'm here for. I have no idea. Which, you know, that is totally normal for all of us because a lot of us have to go through that. We just have that no idea period where we just have to figure it out. And it, the main thing that I like to tell people is to do something different. Step out and just do something, but do it different. Meaning if you had always kind of had this thing in the back of your head you wanted to do, but you never did it, do it and see how it feels. Because it's um, sometimes the novel and the new kind of projects us into something. You may find that you don't like it and that's fine, but you at least stuck, you know, took that time to step forward and do it, to see, to experiment, to discover. And then you find, you may find, wow, this really makes me feel great. And this is like feeling aligned with who I am. And then you go to the next step and the next step. So the one thing I do want to say about that, though, is that there's something I've learned that it's um, not always about what you want to do. And this may be a little bit um, maybe the other side, but this is what I call what you are called to do, not just what you want to do. You may have a passion and an amazing passion to, uh, you know, be an artist or something. I didn't actually have that passion when I was a child. It's very interesting. I, I actually wasn't doing artwork. So my awakening really did happen because it was time, but I didn't have it as a child. But it was something that made me feel good, and I loved it, and I loved doing it, and it's my passion. But coming now, speaking of the light languages, that was not something that I had a passion for necessarily. This was something I was literally called to by spirit and my own soul to step up and do and bring forth. So, and I went through that uncomfortability zone where it was not comfortable. And yet this is sometimes where I think the starborn, whether you're starborn or, or angelic or elemental or whatever you are on this planet, you sometimes have to be called, you know, and your soul is calling, spirit's calling. Sometimes your angels are like, will you? <laughs> you know, they're quietly asking you, will you do this? And then you have to choose, you know, decide whether it's scary, but yes, I'm going to step out and do it because I feel the calling. And sometimes that calling will turn into something you enjoy doing, you have passion about and all of that. Yes, but in the beginning, so it may not be as comfortable or as something you really want to do, but again, you see it stretching and you see yourself growing and you see it expanding you, then that's a pretty good sign that you're positively going on that upward, you know, ascension trajectory with your own soul. Yes, and I really feel like it does start with getting to know yourself better. And I'm always encouraging people to take walks out in nature by yourself, because when you do that, not only are you connecting with the elementals and connecting into the creation, but at the same time, you may start out in your head, you know, kind of thinking about your 3D life or, you know, details around what you're meant to be doing. But as soon as you start to move that into being very present mm -hmm. 
being very present with the nature around you and tuning in, then you start to get a sense of your own uniqueness right. as well. And for myself, when I would take these long walks out in nature, right. I would start to tune in to this other voice that would start to come through me, which I would identify as my higher self, mm -hmm. and it would start to give me messages, and it would start to tell me what I've been called here to do. And at the time, I was a personal trainer, but this voice was coming through saying, you're going to become an author, and you're going to write books about the evolution of consciousness, <laughs> you know, and I would be going, like, uh, <laughs> I'm not an author, and the voice is going, oh, yes, you are, and you're also going to start doing mind-body-spirit workshops, you know, and okay, 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 but it was only when I really took the time to get quiet, mm -hmm. go out in nature, clear my mind, and just be very present mm -hmm. that I was out in creation greater access to the infinite field mm -hmm. of consciousness that I was really able to get those messages loud and clear. Absolutely. I mean, going to Mother Gaia, you know, Mother Nature, you know, Earth here is so rich in energy for us. You know, even just sitting by a tree, you know, how many of you that sat by a tree and just felt the energy of it and felt rejuvenated from it? And that in itself can clear the pathway of all of the, the stuff that we get, all the stress and the, all the 3D you know, mess that we deal with on a daily basis and that we're bombarded with. You get out in nature and just purify the energy. Then you can actually come from a place where you can hear yourself. <laughs> you can hear your spirit guides. You can understand what's happening and then you can start to integrate. So yeah, Mother Earth and Gaia is like the greatest purifier and uh, clarifier, if you will, of, you know, it's the only place we have here. I mean, think about it, you know, where we don't get, we try to take a bath in our, in our, you know, sea salt bath, and I'm all for that, but, you know, being out in the ocean, or, you know, someplace where you're really, like, in it, in the elements, or just sitting on the sand, you know, we can't replicate that in our apartments. <laughs> and in exactly. our houses, and yes. we try, and we do, with having plants around, and we totally recommend that, especially if you're a place in like New York City where you don't have that and you've got to have your environment created to be sort of like a pseudo outdoor. And I, I highly recommend that people do that, actually, that are living in those places in concrete uh, where you can't have that or don't get it, or you need to go in the environment more often. You know, you need to go into a park more often or, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you can to get that that tapping into nature mm -hmm. and by yourself, by yourself, you know, so that you're not distracted by somebody else so that you can hear the voice of spirit coming through this. You can really tune into the other living things and beings and feel their vibration mm -hmm. and connect it in with your own. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a huge thing for people to start to activate their own innate healing gifts. Even your healing gifts can be activated by being in nature. And you can practice when you're in nature with all of the energy, you know, feeling the energy of the plants. That's actually, uh, that's actually how a lot of people learn um, and teach as well by doing pranic healing and, you know, energetically feeling the plants energy. Where does yours begin and where does the plants energy begin and where do they end and how do they meet and what does it feel like? What does it look like? These are all tools that you can utilize in nature being by yourself and allowing yourself to kind of renew that energy and explore and discover. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. And I felt like when I was out in nature, it was actually teaching me as I tuned into the flower, you know, I felt it actually reaching back to me yeah. and showing me, look, I am a radiant spiral, you know, spiraling out from source. I am a fractal. I am actually a holographic mm -hmm. fractal image, you know, and it would just speak to me in the water mm -hmm. would say, I am crystal consciousness. I am actually liquid consciousness. Flowing. Absolutely. You know, well, we have that. We already know that the water, I mean, look at Dr. Emoto's work. Everyone knows Dr. Emoto's work um, that is telling you the water is alive. It has living consciousness. It has intelligence. And it formulates these beautiful crystals depending upon what you even, like you can have the water in the glass and you can be 
loving and have all this loving energy pour at it. And that is what the water in itself picks up energetically. So you drink this loving energy. Whereas if you're throwing out hate bullets at your water or really angry and then you drink it, you're drinking that same frequency. And that is powerful. So that is, that's the blend of nature and in our own world and in our own soul and our own consciousness. And, the, and that's a very good example of the blend of those two things. Living, yeah. breathing, consciousness, alive and well, and all of the other living things and beings out in nature by yourself really opens you to that greater field of consciousness and tunes you into it. Yeah. It was a huge part on my spiritual progression, you know, on um, my ability to tune into spirit and really connect into my not my own higher not only my own higher self mm -hmm. but all of these other guides that wanted to communicate through me as well absolutely yes Great. so moving on so you came to Sedota and you really awakened these gifts it sounds like you really got on an accelerated path when you got here I did it was it was pretty intense I had to learn to to give up basically all of what I thought I knew about myself and try to put the consciousness of corporate life in a, yeah although i gained a lot of skills and gifts that we gain while we're in corporate i'm not saying that you know corporate's all bad and everything because all of us gain the skill sets that we do need to have and that we are utilizing those in our missions later on so it's actually a purpose i don't want to say that it's not but i did go through the process of putting that off to the side a little bit to explore that more inner work and explore the soul coming out and it started pretty much with my artwork I would say I mean uh, some of it I came to do healing work I, I meant to be in Sedona for only six months and it's been uh, eight years now over eight years <laughs> so you know Sedona kind of happened I didn't plan on actually staying here and yet when I got here I did my own personal healing work and uh, which most people come to Sedona initially to do their own work and after at, through that process afterwards but through it I started to unfold uh, artwork and in digital formats now I was a I was doing a little bit of that in my in my corporate world but more for environmental or construction companies where I was doing graphic design in that realm so it was nothing at all what I'm doing now but it started to where I started to take photographs and then I start to embellish and put some of uh, my digital art and it began to come out of all the fairy realms and all the angelic realms and uh, it's moved into the starseed realms and then I started to also uh, begin to do codes light codes which I would hand draw and begin to insert those into my artwork as well because it had another whole layer of activation and that actually came about, I, I remember the time it actually came where it started, where I started to see these light codes that were above people's heads. Like I would walk into a coffee shop and a friend of ours came up and I was like, what is that? It was like all these codes on the top of their heads, like kind of oh little goodness. light codes I was seeing. And I actually said, can I draw that? <laughs> so I kind of started to draw it on a napkin. It started on a napkin. I just kind of draw it out and I was like, this is what's going on above your head. And it turned into a, a cascading um, event of, of me looking and, and at different people and then started to draw codes. So some of it has morphed into me drawing specific light codes that are like energy packages waiting to be downloaded. And that's what I realized that they were. Sometimes they were sitting up there and people almost didn't know how to open their own package. So it's like a package you have sitting there waiting for you and yet you're not really sure how to open it so that it can kind of come in and you're, you can get the download of it. So part of the work that I was moving into was doing this uh, energy code or light code that I'm seeing and then that energy of it in an art form uh, while you look at it and meditate with it and put it in your surroundings begins to open the package and then it starts to trickle down the download. So my artwork started to proliferate in different ways, many different ways, you know, with sacred color rays to the light codes to bringing the otherworldly realms that I'm uh, depicting here, like to have some tangibility. And 
and then I also started doing session work with people as well. So that came in. So all of it sort of trickled in and, and was doing a bit by bit, uh, doing intuitive work with people, which I never thought I would be doing. You know, being in corporate, working in that environment, I just, that's why I said you can one minute be doing something and then completely, you know, five years from that date, completely something else. So you never know what is going to unfold until you open up and say, I'm ready to just discover, you know, discover me and discover who I am and what I'm here for and what my gifts are and what I have to share for the, to the world. Oh, so beautifully expressed, Light Star. Oh my goodness. That is such an important part of the path is just discovering who you are. Yeah. And so that's what I really like about your counseling sessions now that you do is because you really help people discover who they are. Yeah, that's a that's a, the biggest, I, that's my biggest gift, I would say, is to allow people to understand who they are and what they're doing here. You know, many of you have this, I don't know what I'm doing here, and I feel so alone, and I don't feel like I fit in, or I just feel like I don't come from here. Believe me, we have all, and I mean all of us, I'm talking to everybody, I have talk to friends, people that are connected and, you know, we're star family now and we've all gone through that and it's okay to go through that. It's a little bit, you know, disconcerting sometimes, but to know that that's, it's okay, but that's the starting path is to be okay with that and then to start going through that discovery process. So I have a tip, I look at who you are in the other realms. So I'm looking multidimensionally not just in this 3D world, because we have to kind of expand beyond that. You know, we can't just go into like 3D here because it's so what? Limited. We've just got this limited little view of ourselves here, but if we open that doorway, then we start to see the multidimensional aspects of you and what you're doing, what your roles are there. And what I see when I do that in my, that would be my phase one starseed alignment session, is I'm looking, I'm tuning in to see where, what you are, who you are, what you're doing, and that helps to give the totality of who you are and what you're supposed to be doing here. Because some of that will trickle down and it will start to express itself. Maybe not everything. You know, maybe if I'm seeing like, you know, five different aspects, maybe not all of them are going to express in this one moment here. Maybe it comes up five years later and that aspect is now coming through now. So it sometimes your soul sets this up so that you can uh, assimilate and integrate at your own pace so that you're not bombarded with so much you know that's a huge thing yes and so you're aligning people sort of with their purpose and what they came here to do right um i'm curious about when you think of the word counseling many people think well i've got all these problems going on in my 3D life, or I've got karma in this life, you know, I'm having a, a relationship problem with my husband or my mother, um, you know, I'm having these troubles at work. It feels to me like once you are able to expand into the multidimensional levels of yourself mm -hmm. and mind you many of these are vibrating at a much higher frequency yes exactly that this working through all of these details of all of the issues that you may be having in your 3d life mm -hmm. may simply dissolve mm -hmm. as you move into this higher vibrational frequency by tuning into your higher dimensional selves yeah i agree that's a great way of putting it is dissolving because sometimes we want to fix everything so badly that we push, 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 and we try to fix that, and we're doing it when sometimes it does require us just raising our frequency. And that's a simple thing. It's simply said, and it's actually pretty simply done, but most people make it so complicated, and it's very hard to understand what that actually means. And so I actually do feel that any kind of, like, say, just for example, you have this low vibrating frequency of, Maybe it's a physical symptom. So say you've got some physical ailment going on that's resonating. It could be cancer, but it could be anything, like just anything going on that's disrupting your body that's feeling like low. It could be the flu and cold even. 
it's lower vibrational frequency, right? We all pretty much understand that to the level that this is a low vibration, okay? So what do we do? We sometimes try to wipe out that vibration. Like we're trying to attack it. We're trying to throw everything at it from vitamin C to, you know, all of our you know, little silver, like whatever, let's just throw at it. And it's constantly bombarding that to try to fight it. But what if we were to say, what if we were to vibrate at this frequency up here? which is again higher than this frequency here, or just do we call it a different frequency even, that you're vibrating up here, now this energy, it kind of just dissolves because you're not, you're not giving it, you're not trying to tack it or do anything, you're just raising your own consciousness up so that it's actually taking you above where this lower vibration is. And what you find is that when you can get into the state of doing that, the state of being that, actually more than doing, it's a being, state of being, where you raise that frequency up, this no longer is as either not there anymore or it's much less uh, of a problem for you because you feel like up here rather than down here. So that's a huge thing with, and this is dealing with anything, a physical problem, a relationship issue, um, something having to do with your career or your you know, having trouble at home or your kids or whatever, it is really that simple about raising your vibration up. And this, this is, when I say that, it's kind of a vague statement when we say raise your frequency or raise your vibration. What it really means is your thoughts are different. You start thinking differently. Your thoughts are not on the same little wheel or the hamster wheel that it is down here. Oh, how can I, how can I get rid of this? Okay, maybe I need to do this. Or, oh, this isn't going away. Or this is still problematic. Or you're not on that hamster wheel in your mind anymore. Now you're on a higher frequency, which is your thought processes more of, I know that this is actually something I can handle. I always have the solutions whenever they come in. I always have a way of handling this. Like your thoughts become way higher and more consistent in that. And the more you do that, more repeating that and start thinking that way and start feeling that way, then this becomes, it's like, and it doesn't even mean that it has to go away. But what I find happens is that you might synchronistically, once you're vibrating up here and you start having synchronizing events, someone may come to you and say, hey, I had this, just found this amazing practitioner even that God it helps just with this amazing stuff and it's exactly what you needed at that moment and it's taking you to that frequency. Now you go see that person and boom, all that stuff goes away. So it, it can work in different ways, but it attracts the positive energies and the positive synchronistic events that can help you to raise that consciousness up. But you have to start doing it yourself. This isn't gonna happen just by you know other things happening. You have to go internal, Stop the switch, realize where you're at, and then move the frequency up higher. Even one notch higher, this layer higher, <laughs> is better than where you were. And you find that your life starts to shift around you based upon that new frequency and those new thoughts and the new neural pathways that start to begin to form, begin to manifest in your life the positive uh, traits of what you're looking to actually solve. So. In a way, it's like problem solving, you know, spiritual mm -hmm. problem solving, you <laughs> know, yes. much more uh, in a much more effective way than the way that we try to attack it. I'm not saying that other therapies aren't beneficial to do. Um, you know, it's all beneficial to do. But ultimately, when you're trying to get above something, you have to go to that next level. Yes, it feels to me like that is a new, more progressive way of problem solving, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to personal issues that are going on in your life uh, right here and now. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, you know, analyzing mm -hmm. them and, you know, working through these things one at a time and whose fault it is and what should have I said and I didn't say and, you know, um, that kind of laborious uh Counseling that just, right. you know, keeps focusing on the issue. It's like it just keeps focusing yeah. and putting energy back into the problem and back into the issue. And rather just keep focusing on the issue, the issue, the issue, mm -hmm. like simply 
raising your vibration yes. and certainly spending time out in nature is one of them you know meditating and tuning into higher guides is another one mm -hmm. um, exploring the multi-dimensional aspects of yourself so going back to raising your vibration um, in order to dissolve karma mm -hmm. or what have you that you are experiencing in this incarnation um, this also this doesn't just apply to things that are going on right here and now it also applies to all of your stories you're still hanging on to from the oh, past yes. that we need to let go, go of <laughs> and turn around and thank those who taught us those valuable lessons and turn to them and say, now how may I serve? Mm -hmm. Thank you for teaching me those powerful lessons. Mm -hmm. You were just doing the best you could with the consciousness you were in at the time. I forgive you. I forgive myself for my role in it. I'm ready to move on and how may I serve? So how can we just let go of those stories in the well, past? Well, it's funny that, you know, you can also do that same uh, self-talk with your mind. So, for example, if your mind is going on and on and on, and you're just, you, know, you get to the point where you're realizing it, and you're aware of it, like, okay, I need to, you, this is what I like to say, is say, thank you, mind, for sharing. Thank you, mind. Appreciate the help. Thanks a lot. I'm going to put you off to the side right here because I'm in control here, meaning your spirit, your soul is talking. So people have to realize that your spirit and your soul is actually in charge of your body and your mind and everything else. Okay, sometimes we get a little tripped up because we think that our mind is in control or the ego is in control or whatever. And we just have to acknowledge and say, thank you, mind, for sharing. I understand, and sometimes it's coming from fear, so you can understand, oh, at war, sometimes that fear is coming like it's trying to protect you, so it's, you know, trying to protect you, and it has these certain ways of uh, setting up these, these types of protection, but you say, thank you, thank you for sharing, I'm okay, I got this, and then you move forward and take a step, you actually take a step in the direction of what you're, you're, you're truly getting from your soul, from your spirit, from uh, the energy of that higher frequency and you just let your mind kind of sit there and observe So the mind almost becomes the observer looking at what you are doing and actually I've seen that people say that you just always do that but the mind starts to learn <laughs> so it actually Starts to look at what you're doing observing it and you're just giving it that and then it starts to learn that oh well hey she did kind of take care of herself through that and okay, so maybe I didn't need to, you know, jump in so quickly. It's funny how that happens, but you do. You actually are training your mind to, to learn and to be, actually to be able to take direction, if you will, from the spirit. <laughs>